back in the garden, my favourite place, and the plan today is that I have no plan. <laughs> I should have a plan, but what I'm going to do, so the plan is to make a plan by the end of the day for tomorrow. It's due to rain tomorrow actually for about most of the morning, so I'll have the afternoon where I can get back in here to get everything done that I've kind of noted in my head that I haven't been able to get done today. I've got that much to do, I just thought just come in and get started, so there's loads to harvest, I need to get my brassicas sprayed because the caterpillars have absolutely decimated the sprouts. I'm not sure that they're going to survive. We'll have a look together. Um, so basically just potter on for the full day because it's not due to rain here today. Fingers crossed. And I'm, I'm just going to see how I get how I get on. Make a mental note, make a note on my phone of anything that's outstanding that I must get to and try and get that finished off tomorrow. We'll just see how it goes. I'm not even sure where I'm going to start, to be quite honest. I've just been watering the pumpkins that I've got, the squash that are over there, this blue hubbard, in the um, pots. The one that's in the big pot is doing fantastically. The one that's in the smaller terracotta pot, two things. Obviously, the water is sucked out by the terracotta, but secondly, the pot's not big enough. So that's a note for next year. As much as the squash grow well in the um, in the pots, it's a case of give them the biggest pots that you can or ideally put them in the ground. Maybe I'll just put courgettes in pots next year. All that kind of stuff's going on in my head and I'm going to get, finally get all these leaves chopped off, get the rest of those carrot, carrot tops, uh, sorry, of leaves chopped off the tomatoes if you didn't watch the last couple of videos, just so those um, fruits can ri ripen up. I've got the last of the carrots in this bed that we harvested the other day that I've been preserving on a separate video. Um, I'm going to get all the chops, the tops chopped off those carrots um, so that I can get those stashed in the fridge and get to them as and when. Those carrots will be used um, soon, but mostly for preserving. It's just a case of getting around to finishing, you know, to doing that, but they'll be absolutely fine in the fridge for a while. Really pleased with the lack of carrot root fly with the ones that I've looked at at the moment. So that's been fantastic because these haven't been covered. Right, let me see where I'm going to get started. I'm going to make a start by taking the leaves off this tomato plant here and trying not to cut any fruit off, which I've already done. Just to lighten the load, especially for this one because it's leaning so much. And then I'm going to take the top off because this isn't going to grow any more fruit, especially outside at this time of the year. We're at the beginning of September now. And just tell the plant just to put all its energy into ripening the fruits and get all of this done and that's the first job You know, autumn's coming when you see the tomatoes like this. So obviously now the carrots are up, it's exposed, the Swiss chard behind it. I'm going to get in and take um, the dead bits out of that, but there's some that's gone to seed, so that'll be going to the chickens. We'll take care of that in a moment. I'm going to head over to the other side and look at these um, tomatoes and take the rest of the leaves off those as well. And then get all of the carrot tops off and work my way backwards. One bed at a time, that's the plan now. Made a plan up for the day. So the plan now, I've finished the tomatoes is to take all the tops off these carrots. The ones behind me, the, the back of me, are for the animals. Those ones at the front there, which I think are out of camera, they're not there for us. I'm just going to tidy these up as best I can and put all of the carrot tops there. We do probably have too many to feed to the animals at once. It'll end up giving them a bad stomach. The goats are enjoying them. Oh, that one's all squishy. Obviously the animals don't get any of the, the squishy ones, just the ones that have gone to seed, maybe a little bit woody, and then they can choose whether to eat them or not. I can't believe how many we've got out of this bed though, it's absolutely fantastic. I think we'll definitely be self-sufficient in carrots until the start of the salad season next year. I don't really want to be eating them fresh uh, from here, however the ones that are in the bed over yonder they may last enough to, to be eaten fresh, but I'm not too worried. I'm thinking about doing, I always said I would never pressure can coleslaw, <laughs> but I'm thinking about giving it a go. Um, I was laughing with my, my friend in Wales, Louise, my bestie um, before when we were saying like, I don't understand why people would do that. However, I think it might be useful for in those months when there aren't any fresh carrots, 
um, when you want to kind of have you know a side salad or something like that or even just have it as a, a bowl of salad with some other things added we shall see but at the moment oh that's nasty but at the moment these guys are going into um different things that are going to be frozen pressure canned dehydrated all of those good things i made a start on that yesterday with the roasted carrot soup that's in a separate video if you're interested in that but for now, I'm going to sit here and get the rest of these de-headed and um, get this bed tidied up and move on. That was a nasty joke. Well, the sun's come out. It might not look it, hence the hat and uh, a lot warmer now. It's so nice though. It's really nice working conditions. It's, um, it's not too hot at all and there is a little bit of a breeze. <laughs> it's always a weather report, isn't there? Right, I thought I was done. So this, I've all, all the tomatoes are de-leaved, uh, defoliated, whatever it's called. Um, and I've taken some of the dead chard off, but there is some of the, the larger ones that I need to get out there. Definitely gonna go to the chickens in that case. I'm gonna put the barrow of stuff here into the pigs, but the chickens need some greens as well. But I thought I'd got all the carrots. I've just found some more amongst the chard, so I need my little trowel to get those out. Hurry, hurry, knife. And there's also other carrots there that I didn't get out yesterday because they just snapped and they must be quite big. Fingers crossed. So I'm going to get those out and then I'll be done. So these carrots are a little bit exposed, so I'm just going to try and wiggle them out. That one's all okay. cool. Oh, look at that. That's a nice long one another dodgy looking three three for the price of one oh, these are actually coming out easier than i thought they were going to which is why i went and got the the hurry hurry that needs relocating so these are pushed out of the soil presumably because they're so long a few more so any of the little ones that i've got wow these are a really nice length um I'll just wash up and put them all into things like stock. So kind of that size. I mean, obviously you can eat them fresh, but they won't go to waste. They'll um, they'll go into soups or stocks. And well, doesn't everything? Hang on, snapped one then. Didn't I? Oh, I did. Oh, so all of these. <laughs> <laughs> all of these are split. Can have a giggle at your carrots. Right, and then there's one over here. Come on. Look, I'll split these guys. Right, and there's actually more in between. Um, but I'm going to take out this Swiss chard. Excuse me, I thought it was done. There was more there than I anticipated. Now they are really nice carrots. Um, I can't remember the, it's AF3 I've written on the label. So I'll have a look to remind myself what that stands for. But they're really nice. So I'm going to grow those again. I've taken out the chard that's bolted and just put that down there, which I'll feed to the chickens, as I say. And then there's a few more leaves that need tidying up. That I've just noticed around here. Make a bit of space. I'm going to cut these chives back again. They are prolific and just get this bed tidied up as well. And at least that'll look nicer as you kind of come in to the plot. Um, I've raked it over and taken out of the bindweed. I've put that separately. Oh, goodness me, you can probably hear you. Out of breath, that's terrible, isn't it? I need to get fit. Anyway, this is starting to come along nicely. Hasn't taken too long, but these things are never, never that quick, are they? I'm hoping that child will keep going for a good while longer. It does look as though it might um, through the winter, ideally. I've obviously got more chard in the bed right in the corner in the original vegetable plot there so fingers crossed we'll have plenty of greens um because at the end of the day if all else fails as long as you've got the greens in your diet then that's going to be great from a self-sufficiency point of view so i'll get these carrots topped again the carrot tops tape taken off them i'll keep those few greens separate because we will be able to give those to the animals later uh, to the goats and that later but as i said there's too many for for feeding um for the rest sounds like somebody here 
just a delivery right in terms of what's going in this bed when um, I finished in here I'm not too sure to be honest with you there's lots of things that can be sewn direct at this time of the year I don't know if I'm just going to get this bed filled up because it was one that you can see needs more got a lot more compost in it a, a lot of them do to be quite honest so I may just do that and fill it up with compost I'm not 100% sure yet but that's not a decision that I need to make today there's so many other things that I need to be getting on with so I'll get finished here and then we'll see what's next we have pilot practice again. <laughs> I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to know what they're actually doing. There's somebody doing um, a loop the loop the other day. Stephen shouted me, and for a moment we were kind of watching, thinking it, it is going to correct itself, isn't it? But it did, and it did it multiple times. So it was quite good to watch. I tried to get it on camera, but it was like the tiniest little dot, and you couldn't really make it out. Filming it for you, but he's just flying straight. <laughs> Oshie. Right, the chickens have got the chard. I've put some in for the ducks as well because there's those cheeky chickens that always go in where the ducks are too. Um, not gonna think of anything small holding related like that today, purely concentrating on the gardening. So I'm pleased this bed's about done. I've tidied up the chard at this end. Let's have a, a quick look at how many carrots, I'm not gonna count them, we've got and what everything's looking like before I move on to the next job. So there's the carrots. I mean these, it's, um, what was it called? I've just remembered it. Amsterdam for saying that's what the F stands for. But look, I mean, if that isn't a cheeky thumbnail just for fun, do you think I should? We've got a belly button, an extra leg, a tail. <laughs> anyway, Tracy, so that's the carrots. They are looking fantastic. A um, little bit of bindweed there that I'm going to put separate. I didn't feed it to the chickens, I suppose I could actually, couldn't I? I've taken the weeds out of this bed, but I haven't chopped the chives down. Just remember that while I'm talking to you, cleared up all of the chard. So that's looking really good. I'm chuffed with that, really pleased with it, to be quite honest. Nice, clear line through that I can haul and all of the tomatoes are looking fantastic. So I shall finish the chard and then I really will be done. Um, or oh, and, <laughs> how many jobs can you think of while you're talking? I'm gonna chop the top off these tree lilies, like you guys said. I'll probably just do it about here on each one. And then Ali, I think you said, leave them go into like a bamboo. There was a few people commented, so thank you. Um, but I remember Ali saying, leave them go into kind of a really dry sort of bamboo type stick. So I'll do that. And then hopefully we can finally move on to the next bed. I feel like I relearn this every year. Um, I always, I, I'm surprised when I see it, but then I feel like, oh, maybe you did know that. Caterpillars on nasturtiums. Goodness me. This is the next job. My goodness me, they have completely decimated. I'm so pleased, sorry, finish that sentence. The caterpillars have completely decimated the leaves on many things, but I am so pleased that I left in these um, cauliflower stalks where I harvested the cauliflower before we went on holiday, because I said it gives them something to continue to munch on instead of having the things that I don't want them to eat. However, they've done that as well. So can you see? there on the call rabbi i'm going to come in here and um, essentially i'm going to take work on this bed i'm taking all of these stalks out now i'll probably put some in for the chickens actually so they can munch on the caterpillars <laughs> sorry if that grosses anyone out um but what, what i'll also do is throw some in for the pigs i'm going to harvest the call rabbi which are absolutely ginormous i mean they are called i think it's ginormous or enormous call rabbi um but there's going to be some space all along here get everything weeded rake out all of those old leaves and things interestingly they seem to have left the black tuscan kale alone i mean they're literally if i step over here without falling they are literally right next to it oh no they haven't left it alone look anyway i'm going to come in and i'm going to get it sprayed um i'm going to wear gloves to harvest this because uh, i don't want squished caterpillars on my fingers <laughs> what a nightmare uh, also, I'll take some sweet pea flowers for in the house just before they finish and we're going to get some seeds too. I've seen people are already um, putting sweet peas in for next year to overwinter. We we'll might give it a go. We'll see how it goes. I'm not sure if I can use the seeds that we've got from this year to put in straight away. Not sure on sweet peas. Anyway, look at the state of the sprouts in the distance there. I'm not sure they're going to recover, you know. Right, this is going to be quite a big job, I think. Oh, and I need some celery. Um, for some recipes that i'm doing so there's a lot of weeds here that need taking out i think i'm going to need a bigger boat again what about you 
considering I was feeling sorry for the butterfly population, I'm starting to massively regret that now. Goodness me, what an absolute, this is just complete decimation of the crops here. So, good news is the coal rabbi are looking really good. I just hope they're not woody. Do you remember before, before the holidays, um, I was saying I hope that they'll be okay until after the holidays and obviously it's another week or so on since, no, anyway, it's, it's a few days since then. Um, they are the really big ones, as I say, that's the whole point of what the variety is. I just hope that they're not woody. I mean, there's only one way that we'll find out. So that's what these look like. And then I'm not even sure what the raw back is. So I figured the best way um, for the coal rabbi was to kind of harvest the leaves off in situ or chop the leaves off. I mean, you can see, look at the state of them. All this will clean up, of course, so don't be too grossed out if, if that's kind of your thing. This is still attached at the root. Um, they all are. So yeah, it's, I don't know if this tag is for one of them or if it's an old one. Yeah, enormous coal rabbi, that's what that stands for. And these were sown on the 24th of February. So we'll get them up and we'll have a look together in the kitchen on a different video. I don't even know what this plant is. Um, I have to be honest with you. Obviously this is Russian kale or the red vined kale. So they'll hopefully come back for over winter. But I mean, they are just having a complete feast. So I'm going to get in with the stuff that Charles Dowden recommended. I know other people have said they don't like it for various reasons, but I can't leave it like this. I mean, these were the sprouts. <laughs> what's what's left? Um, I honestly don't know if they'll grow back. So you can see I'm working my way across, starting at this side, working across here. Um, I'm going to obviously spray all of these guys on here and hopefully get rid of them over the next few days. Celery is looking quite good, um, so that's okay. I'm going to make sure I get some of this harvested for the work that I'm doing in the kitchen. Taking out these leaves as exposed. I think this is a honey, is it a honeydew? Oh no, that was the snow crown. Um, the cauliflower, sorry, with the crook, a snow crown. What was this? Golden nugget, that's what that was. So they're only little ones. So there's still time for those to come on. Volunteer potatoes, mix artichokes. Um, and then as we move further over, there's more coal rabbi over there, so we'll get to those. <laughs> but I have to be honest, it's worse than I, worse than I thought it was. I knew it was bad, but hey ho. And then there's more courgettes and things in here. Somewhere or other, we'll get to those in a minute. I'm not in a massive rush for those. And this is another blue hub hubbard hanging over the fence, which is looking good. So small mercies. I'm not sure if you can see progress on the camera. So these here are Portuguese kale, the tags there, so I've had a look. And obviously you can see the black Tuscan next to them. I think they'll come back. I think they'll be okay. A few of the black Tuscan behind um, the red Russian kale have have really, you know, the, let's go and have a look. They've really been hammered, but there's new growth in there as well as a million caterpillars. I'm wondering whether to come out with the um, hose pipe and blast off all of the gunk, which I assume is caterpillar poo disgusting but real life there we go lovely um yeah i might do that before i put the bt on let it dry after i've blasted them off and then put the bt on um i'll have a think but believe it or not now it's time for something to eat for me <laughs> i know a lot of you'll be thinking how can you eat when you're doing that um that's the life of a gardener sometimes isn't it so i'll come out with the horse pipe and definitely get these um sort of blasted off so that they're nice and clean. This one's lovely already. Um, but any that aren't nice before I harvest them, I'll just get those cleaned up. But yeah, I need something to eat first because believe it or not, I've been on with this for a good few hours now. It just seems to be taking forever. I have got a few cauliflowers that were in there as well. Again, they might not be the prettiest. They will clean up and be absolutely fine to use in soups. Sounds like it's going to be a very soupy winter. Um, I just have to see. I'll have a think while I'm getting something to eat and think if the water method is the best way to do it. I can't believe it. Absolutely decimated. Right, this is the current state of play. It's raining, it wasn't forecast. Never believe the forecast at the moment. So what we've done, or what I've done, with your help, um, I've cleared 
all the leaves off the coral rabbi on this side and I've pulled out the cauliflowers that we'd already harvested, basically done the same, tidied up the plants that are left, some of which don't know what they are. Sprouts have taken most or all of the leaves off the bottom. Time will tell if they survive. But what I've done on the other side is blast off everything with the power jet wash bit on the hose pipe. That seemed to really work well. I mean, Mother Nature may just be humouring me and sat there saying, mm -hmm, this isn't going to work. But it did seem to work well. And I know that's just blasting the cauliflowers onto the floor. But at least if then I can stay on top of them every day with the kind of blasting things off with the BT, whatever, we shall see. This is the pile that I've got left to go into the barra here behind me. More chicken food and yeah the rain is coming down but let's have a little look together so these are the coral rabbi on this side they're not as big as the other side they probably went in later if i remember rightly but one of them sadly has got a hole in it so i will look into that and if it's no good again that'll just go to pig food there's another cauliflower that i didn't know about that's going to go to pig food as well i have a feeling all of these here are cauliflowers and they've just not managed um you know they've not had what they needed so i'll leave those in and fingers crossed they'll come good the sprouts I mean, I haven't sprayed these on this side, as you can see. There's just flipping caterpillars all over and they, they do go into the middle of the plants. Can you see they go down the inside once, um, once they feel like they're under attack? I mean, I've sprayed this plant and look. Ha ha, you didn't get us on that one. <laughs> I tell you what, the quick little things. Anyway, oh, and that one. Oh, heck. Definitely putting the BT on regardless, but I did think that it's at least got all of the black gunge off, if nothing else. I think I'll have to pick those off by hand. Lovely. And at least it's better than it was. That's the main thing. So I shall get this into the wheelbarrow, get this all sprayed on this side, and then get some of that BT made up. Looks like I've got there just in time because it's going to start chucking it down now by the sounds of, by the sounds of it. What I was going to do was get the BT straight on, but with this rain, I'm not sure because I don't want the rain just to wash it off. That's pretty pointless, isn't it? So, um, Rodney, seriously, come out. So I'll get it made up and then if this rain passes, because as I say, it's not even due, um, then we can get it straight on and it can dry. Look, look, there's another one there. Anyway, stop it, Tracy. Um, we can, it can dry and then hopefully any caterpillars that, cr that crawl back up off the ground, because there are a hell of a lot, um will obviously eat it and hopefully you know meet their maker right the one i've got says it's one five gram scoop per two liters so i'm just trying to get up to five liters it is wonky at the minute and i've done two and a half scoops i hope that's the right math <laughs> so i'm going to get let that settle and then when the rain passes i'm going to get it on and this is it now i mean business I'm looking and the ones, the caterpillars that are on the floor are finding the nearest plant and kind of clinging onto it and starting to go up again. So I'm going to make sure I do the bottom of all the plants first and then obviously spray the rest to make sure I capture any others. I think this is going to be an every day or every few days job. Um, I'm not too sure how often other people use it. I presume not daily, but I definitely want to stay on top of it because this is at the end of the day, our winter food, amongst other things, it's behind us here as well the brassicas that are in here that's not that's a weed so i'll probably spray these but at the minute there's no sign of them on any of the ones over here which are the new plantings i mean i can see holes obviously something's been having a pop so i'll probably spray them anyway i did get an extender with this um with this pump i can't find it i think i've used it on the other one we've got two but I'll find it. Anyways, so just making that up and as soon as this rain passes, I'll give it all a spray. I feel like one of the Ghostbusters. Right, I've done the bed behind me and I've also done the red cabbages in the distance. I'm going to give these guys here a quick going over because um, it doesn't take very long. You can put the setting on this, probably the same as all of them. You can just put it onto constant so you don't have to press it down with your thumb all the time. And it just does it for you, basically. So I'm going to get these done, even though they're not showing the same amount of caterpillar damage as in the other bed and then that's a good job done i think i've just checked the weather and um it says there's a hundred percent chance of rain right this minute so i'm laughing because i've checked it for tomorrow anyway i don't know why um it did originally say that it was due to rain but there's a 20 percent chance now which has decreased compared to what it was um but it's going to be a very windy day but that means that i can still get outside if i need to i've got some kitchen work to get done tomorrow too um so i'll just see how it pans out 
there'll be a video of the onion harvest a nice short video just showing what those are like and the varieties and the same for the potato harvest as well i'm hoping to get some help with that um but that'll have to for the potatoes that is that'll have to wait till the weekend because there's only myself and my son that's off this week um and he's got no interest in digging up the potatoes with me unfortunately um i could do it all myself but i know that they'll enjoy doing it stephen and grace as well anyway I think that is the end of the jobs that I wanted to get done today. I've been making a list on my phone of things that I want to get done tomorrow. Um, as I say, there's all the harvests too. I'm just looking around while I'm talking to you. So don't get distracted, Tracy. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've been getting up to in the garden today and starting on with some of the challenges and getting on top of them from what we identified over the last few days. I shall talk to you very soon, hopefully, in what will be another gardening video. 